just love it when you record an entire video and then you forgot to save it and now you have to re-record it? Me too. What's going on guys? It's TRSKSS, the security officer of the Diamond Casino, here again with a brand new video for you and it's my second time recording this. So hopefully, hopefully people will understand that if it's not as good as it was the first time. But anyways, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you all are doing well and it's the second video of the day today. So I figured I would go ahead and make a little update video for you, give you guys a couple things that you might want to know in terms of online learning and school. And I know this is a little different type of video than what you're used to, and you're probably like, why you focus on school? Like, aren't you supposed to be doing your YouTube videos, blah, blah, blah? Well, yes, people, but I also am a college student as well in my full time, so that's why... I want to make this video for you and let you know about these tips and tricks that I have for remote and online learning because maybe some of you people are in the same situation as me. Maybe you're in the same boat where this was new to you and you need some tips and tricks and some help to get you through it. So before I start, if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe here if you're brand new because I'd really hate it if you missed out on any of my brand new content here in the future. But with all that being said, Let's go ahead and get things started today. So, you know, with the coronavirus, there's been a lot of people that have been displaced and in different situations than they normally would be in. And that's why I'm here, to go ahead and help you guys out, give you tips and tricks and helpful things that you should know for your online schooling. Well, the very first one that I've found that helps me the most is staying organized. And you guys can do this in a few ways. So the very first one is to set a planner and set all the stuff that you have to do for every single week. So say for example, you have an assignment for history class, a couple math problems for math class, a test in your science class, and a reading that's due for your English class. Well, by you setting aside everything that you have to do for the week, you have a better idea and things are more manageable of everything that has to get done. So, for example, the best way to do this is to get a planner and to spend time taking all the stuff that you have to do and making it into a to-do list. So, put everything on your planner and then go through and set out times and days, things like that, that you want to get it done. Maybe Monday you did your math homework, Tuesday you did your history homework, and then Wednesday you do your science homework, so on and so forth. Now this will help you budget out your time and it will also help you keep organized because you'll know that you'll have to get your math problems done on Monday and then once you got your math problems done, you're free to go, things are done, everything's good. Now continuing on with that thought, I want to give you guys a tip about keeping stuff manageable because if you can keep things manageable, it'll help you out a lot in the long run. So basically what I mean by that is don't sit down to do all your work all at once. You know, don't take every single assignment that you have and throw it all onto your computer and do it all on Sunday when they're all due at 11.59 p.m. Don't start them at like 8 p.m. on Sunday night because, yes, that's procrastinating and it's also not very good time management and a lot of other stuff that will just give you unnecessary stress. So if you don't have unnecessary stress, then I would definitely take the advice about taking the time to put everything in your planner and then spread it out throughout the days. Now kind of going with that is actually about a concept of work-life balance. And I don't know if you guys ever heard of that concept or not before, but basically what it is is it's setting aside the time to get work done and set aside the time to get life done and not letting both things bleed into one another. Because if you let these things bleed into you, and kind of overlap a lot and consistently, then you're not really going to have a good balance and you're going to be doing your work when you should be eating your dinner. You know that steak meal that your mom always cooks with the good potatoes and bacon? Well, if you guys didn't set aside the time to do your work and didn't keep your work-life balance, then you might be studying your flashcards at the dinner table. And when you're doing your work, you might be trying to watch that brand new movie, brand new Netflix series that just came out, and it'll just be a whole lot more distractions, things like that. So make sure that you maintain a good balance and set aside the time 
to do all of your different assignments. Like I said, maybe Monday you do your math and you set it from 3 to 4 p.m. And then at 4 p.m. you're all done. No more math for the day. No more school for the day. Things like that. Because you don't want to get burnt out and you don't want to do everything all at the last minute. Now, moving on to the next tip and trick that I have for you guys is to ask for help if and when you might need it. So basically, this is a new thing for everybody and not everyone is used to it. It's not normal to do online schooling all the time and as you've probably seen with your teachers they probably had some struggles uploading all their online classes and stuff online so definitely make sure that if you need help you ask for it and what I mean by that is if you have friends in your class or you're not really understanding your math problems because math is really hard to teach online or maybe you're really just struggling behind in your history class you should definitely ask for help, reach out to your teacher, your friends, your classmates, your parents, siblings, anything to get some help and then everything will be okay. Because if you take some initiative to get help, then your teacher at the end of the semester, say you have that 79.9 that you really wanted to get a B to get a good grade on your report card, well, your teacher will probably say you were making an effort all semester, really trying hard, and then they'll probably bump your grade up. So you'll get some bonus points later on in the end, especially if you take some initiative now to set things up. Now continuing on with another tip that I have for you is don't do anything that you wouldn't do in your normal classes if they were all in person. Basically what I mean by this is don't decide that you're going to become lazy, not watch your lectures, do all this other stuff because your teachers will find out and you'll have some negative consequences in the end. Say for example, you'd never really liked your history class, it was just such a pain to go. Well, although it is online and you could probably look up the answers on Quizlet, you should definitely consider not doing that and still attending the lecture or watching the videos and things like that. Because sometimes the teachers might know or have a program installed where they can tell if you actually been looking up the answers and then you get a zero on your final exam and you just failed your whole class. So definitely make sure that you do all the things that you would do in your online classes that you would in your normal classes. And maybe if you hadn't done some good things like taking notes, stuff like that, maybe right now might be a good time to start because you can pause your lecture, get all the information that you need, continue it, go back, rewind, and you can build really good study habits for the next semester that you might be in person in school. So that's just really a couple tips that I have for you guys. And I'm not saying that all of them is stuff that's happened to me, but it is stuff that's happened to like friends and people that I know, especially with the last one. Make sure that you don't do anything stupid because your teacher might know. You know, I want everybody to be successful in their schooling. So definitely make sure that you use these tips and tricks in order to do the best that you can. Now, with all that being said, hopefully you guys are enjoying the double uploading that I've been having, and I have two videos to come tomorrow, and I already uploaded one today about top secret websites that you probably didn't know about in GTA 5. So definitely make sure that you check it out, and I'm sorry that today's content, both videos, were not really focused on GTA 6, because I know that's been the theme recently. Well, you got to take a break from it sometimes, you know. Reading all that GTA 6 forums at 3 o'clock in the morning can really cause a strain on your eyes, so you have to take a break and not spend as much time with it. But anyways, people, like I said, hopefully you did enjoy the video, and hopefully you find these tips helpful and useful in pursuing your education, regardless of what grade and age you are. And if you guys have any other tips, make sure you drop them down below in the comments, because we... I might not have remembered one and forgot one, or you might have a really good tip that works for you, things like that. So anyways, I'll catch you guys later on tomorrow with two brand new videos. It's going to be a really big one, so make sure that you're here at 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central, 11 a.m. Pacific, because it's about to be some crazy, crazy video about the GTA 6 trailer. It's finally here. I can't wait to showcase it to you people tomorrow, so definitely make sure that you're here for it. With all that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one, and peace out.